All right, so next we're going to talk about what's called scalar multiplication. And this, this scalar terminology, again, is something that's sort of inherited from physics. Um, but we can sort of see why we would call this a scalar here. Um, the idea with scalar multiplication is this is going to be something that scales a vector, right? Um, and if you want to go with the basic, you know, okay, multiplication is repeated addition, which I mean, makes sense for integers and kind of makes sense for other things, but um, think about doing, instead of adding, say, v to the tip of w, what if I add v to the tip of v? All right? Add another v. All right? Well, v plus v would be a1 b1 plus a1 b1. So it's a1 plus a1 using this rule. b1 plus b1. And okay, so that is 2a1. Oops, sorry, not plus 2a1. And then 2b1. And, you know, it would be reasonable, I think, to want to refer to this as just 2v, right? Like v plus v, 2v, just like a1 plus a1 is 2a1. Why not, right? And, and I could do a third one, that would work too. And, and then we say, well, what about like, what about negative v? What, what would minus v be, right? And we can think about these things as well. So we want, we want to talk about sort of the scale, right? The magnitude of the vector. We can change the length, right? Without necessarily changing the direction. Uh, except possibly reversing the direction. Um, you know, what if I did minus v, sort of same magnitude but opposite direction? Um, you know, well, notice that if I do minus v plus v, if I kind of, you know, add minus v here, it's just going to go right back to where we started with. Uh, so it's it's a vector with no displacement. It doesn't take you anywhere. Uh, there's a name for that. That's the zero vector, right? So the zero vector is the one vector that actually doesn't have a direction because it has no magnitude. It doesn't go anywhere. Um, and that kind of makes sense too, right? If you, if you add a vector to its negative, you should, you should get zero. And then if you think about kind of the component-wise addition, what should it look like, right? You know, I need something that I'm going to add to A1 something that I'm going to add to b1, I want to end up with the zero vector, which should have zero magnitude, so that kind of forces us to have zero, zero as the components. And well, then you need minus a1 there, and you need minus b1 there, All right? So, so minus v would have to be minus a1 and minus b1. And, you know, that's like minus 1 times a1 and minus 1 times b1. And so you play around with these examples for a while and sort of forces you into the following definition. So this time, you're going to be given, say, a vector v. Let's just call it a b. And a... real number, let's say C, we define the scalar multiple C times V by, you know, switch to another color for that formula, so C times V, or if you like C times AB, is just c times a and <coughs> c times b. All right, um, so that's scalar multiplication. And so if you play around with this for a little bit, and we're, I mean, we're doing this for, for calculus, not so much, you know, if you're in linear algebra, you're going to spend more time with this. But um, you play around with the addition, you play around with the scalar multiplication, you, you play around with how they fit together um, and you'll discover that a lot of the usual rules for algebra that you're used to, 
they're still going to work in this context. Right? Um, so you have this sort of commutative property for addition, right? The order doesn't matter. If you wanted to add three or more vectors together, uh, you will find that that addition is associative. It doesn't matter how you group them, you will get the same answer. Um, you can find that uh, scalar multiplication and an addition, they interact through a distributive property, right? If I, if I wanted to do something like, you know, uh, two times v plus w, I'm going to find out that that's the same thing as doing 2 times v plus 2 times w, right? Um, all the sort of properties that you should expect, right? Sort of if you want something that behaves the way you expect algebra to behave, turns out they work. Um, everything kind of works the way you would like it to work. So when you're doing algebra with these things, you, you know, you tend not to run into surprises. You sort of do things the way you think they should go, and, and it actually works out. Okay? Um, so we'll, uh, we'll look at a few examples to try and get an idea of how this goes, um, and then we'll move on to the next thing.